Hi, teacher friends. So this video is hopefully going to be a shorter version of an original video I made where I show how to set up your Google Classroom for a week's worth of e-learning. So this is specific to what our school is asking us to do, and it links up nicely with how we can adjust um, one of our tracker templates, our HyperDocs, to go along with this. So after a lot of feedback from the students, we have some rules that we should abide by when it comes to our classroom. So first of all, in your settings, it is suggested by most people that in the stream, you hide the notifications for classwork. Otherwise, your stream gets really crazy. Um, speaking of classwork, this is where you're going to enter all of the, the tasks that your students need to accomplish. Um, the two big ones that we're going to use are assignments and materials. The difference between an assignment and material is, is pretty important. So an assignment is something that is either going to be a document that the child is turning into you via the Google Classroom or something that automatically grades for you, like a quizzes or a Google Forms quiz. If it's not something that they're turning in or getting points for on Google Classroom, then you're going to call it a material. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create my topic. And this is, again, feedback from the children. They said it makes more sense for their navigation for later if we go by weeks. So week one. August, um, I think it's 24 to 28. All right. Now, a lot of the things that we're setting up could be edited later, and I'll warn you when there's something that you can't change. The topic, obviously, you can edit. Um, next, I'm going to create my first assignment. So for me, this is going to be what's called my tracker. And I've already created everything that I'm going to be attaching. That's important. I'll put instructions in later. I don't want to bore you with that. But here's where you actually add the, the item that you created. So in my Google Drive, there we go. And everything I've recently edited, which is everything I need today, um, is showing up right away because it says it was a recent edit. So if you're doing it that way, that's smart. Otherwise, save it somewhere easy for you to access. So this is my tracker. I'll use that one. Yes, not that one. I'm going to insert it, and because this is a, it's, I'm calling them hyper slides, it's Google Slides, the children are going to do some edits to it, and I want them to have their own file so they can turn it in at the end of the week. So we're going to make a copy for each student. This is one of the items that you can't fix later on. So once you post this assignment, and it goes out to all the children, it makes a copy in each of their Google Drives. If you come back tomorrow and you try to edit your original template for this, it's not going to change what they see in their Google Drive. So if you decide tomorrow, like, oh, man, I made a mistake, you're going to have to delete this assignment. So make sure this doesn't go out until you're ready for it. Here you can adjust some things. You can assign it to all students or just selected students, change the point values. Um, due dates are very important when it's an assignment because that way it gives them notifications when they're overdue. It gives you a notification when they turn it in late, and it also shows up on their Google Classroom. So it is going to go into the week one topic, but I could boom that later if I needed to. For assigning, you can just click assign if you know you're ready. There are some other options, though. You can schedule it to go out at a certain time, so like Monday morning at 8 o'clock. Um, you can just save it, or you can decide here, like, this is garbage and I want to delete it. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and assign it. Apparently my internet's slow, so hold on. <laughs> ah. And then there it is under the topic for week one. Oh, but you might notice I didn't actually write a one. What a good teachable moment. Week one, you can rename it. All right, we're going to add another assignment. Um, let's see. The next thing I would have them do, actually, you know what? I take that back. I'm going to call the material. So this is where I would have them do what we're going to call old school learning. They're going to watch my video that I've already recorded, and they're going to take notes, and they're going to do some practice on a worksheet for me. So I'm going to call that a material because they're not actually turning in anything on the Google Classroom. 1.3 algebraic expressions. I'll fill in the description later. But as far as adding my documents, this is something that you can't change later. So you want to add the documents and attachments in the right order. So the first thing I'm going to attach is the notes page that they're going to need. So right here, I have the 1.3 notes as a PDF. Okay, then they would access my video. 
So mine are all on YouTube, and I don't have the URL pulled up. So I'll just have it search for Abruzzo Math 10.3 Part 1 2020. You don't have to type the exact name. It'll search for it, just like anything else on YouTube. There we go. So they would take the notes. They would then want to probably practice. Oh, but before we get to the practice, another thing that I like to attach are my slides. So these are the really, I'm going to call them pretty, but they're not really that pretty. These are my inked up slides for the presentation. I have a lot of students who um, are weak in their note taking skills. So um, I want to always attach those slides. That's a teacher preference. It's up to you. But this is what the kids can see. So. Sometimes this discourages note taking, which is a bummer. Um, but it, you know, teacher preference. So let me get out of there. So I've attached the slides. I want to attach some homework for them next, which is this guy. And some feedback from the children. They told me that they don't like the notes, the homework, things to be together. They want everything to be its own separate attachment. So the homework page, and then after that, I'm going to attach, and I could have done this all at once, um, the key. I could have grabbed them by hitting control. Whoopsies. All right, so there's all the attachments. I can come back and fill this in later. That's not important. I can put it in the topic, but if I forgot, I can move it. And I'm going to post it to all students right now. So right away, I'm not real happy with the order I did this, and I want the tracker up top. Okay, good enough. All right, the next thing I'm going to attach would be another assignment, um, but it's going to be a quizzes. So instead of creating an assignment and putting a link in, you actually go to the quizzes that you've already figured out that you like. So I basically, I stole someone else's quizzes and I edited it a bit so it fit my needs. And we're going to assign it as homework. Now, this is where I'm taking a little bit of liberty. Um, I don't even start school for a couple of weeks, so... <laughs> It says they should complete the quiz by, and then it's only letting me go so far out. So if this was me actually planning, I would have to come back and fix this. I'll show you how we're going to do that later. All right, so adjust the time, the due date, whatever you want. This is kind of garbage for me because I'm not actually assigning it. So it's not assigned to any class. Prior to this, and I can make a different video for this if you want, um, you needed to... Um, oops. Uh, I needed to upload my classes, which I didn't. Oh my gosh, I do this every time. It says to manage classes. Update Google Classroom. I just created this class, so I need to include it. Cool, cool. Okay, now it will be there. So now when I go back to my library, I'm going to go to Algebraic Expressions, and I want to assign it. You know, for funsies, I'm just going to, whatever, keep it there. Okay, I'm going to assign it to the classroom that I want. I'm going to name this Algebraic Expressions Quiz. Um, the scheduling and the description, you can adjust this in Google Classroom if you want. I would normally say, like, you're going to get two opportunities on this quiz, so make sure you do your best. And then you can start it now. That's fine. You can change that, though, if that doesn't suit your needs. It's warning me that you haven't assigned it yet. I know. So here's some preferences. I'm going to give them two attempts on this first one because it's their first week back to school, and there's always at least a couple kids who mess up quizzes for some reason. So two attempts is fine with me. Because I'm giving them two attempts, I'm not going to show them the answers during the game or after the game, um, but as a class, we can go over it later. The timer makes some kids very anxious. It has like a little progress bar at the top that goes down as time elapses. Um, so you can turn that off if you have very nervous students. You cannot show the leaderboard typically uh, for privacy issues, so I always turn that off. If you're just doing a live game for funsies and they get to enter like fake names, you can show the leaderboard. Um, shuffle questions is fine unless you have a quiz that progresses in difficulty or rigor. Um, so I'm okay shuffling and all these I like to keep turned on, so now I'm going to assign the game. So. It's in my classroom. I'll show you that once I refresh. So it's up here. It just kind of goes up into the top of the Classworks page. I'm going to move it down here. And you'll notice that if I go and edit this, 
Like I can change all the due dates and stuff on Google Classroom. The trouble that we ran into last year during our, you know, head first dive into remote learning, it doesn't change the due date and the closure date on quizzes. So what you'll notice is in your reports, you got your algebraic expressions quiz that just got assigned, right? So right here, it says your deadline is August 16th. You could edit it right here, but like today, as far as I can go out in the future is August 23rd. So what I would have to do is like before school starts on August 24th, I would have to, or before that even, I would have to take this and expand the due date down like way far into the future. All that's gonna do is um, it's gonna stop the quizzes from shutting down on a child who's trying to attempt it late. If you want it to shut down, then go ahead and set up the due date however you want. But the quizzes due date and the classroom due date are two different due dates. Anywho, we're back <laughs> in the classroom. We have all these things lined up. One thing I will point out to you is that your children have to join your quizzes class before they can access that quizzes link. So one of the first things you wanna do when you meet with your children is say, let's explore all the websites we're gonna use and everybody please join my quizzes class. All right, back to classwork. I've attached a tracker. I've attached some materials. We've attached a quiz. So one of the other things that I would typically attach in a week would be a Google Forms quiz. So this is a Google Forms quiz that I've already created. And there's an assignment and a quiz assignment. Now, this really tricked teachers last year. Don't use quiz assignment because that would be like if you don't have a quiz ready yet. I don't like using it because this one doesn't import grades automatically. The assignment will import the grade automatically. So I don't remember what I called this, but something like that. All right, we'll do instructions in a minute. I've already created this in Google Forms, and if you have some good team members, um, they'll be sharing things with you. Okay, this one I didn't save. So 1.4. There's better ways to search, but that's okay. All right, so this particular quiz is just a normal Google Forms quiz. I want grade importing all the time, and you can decide whether or not you lock your Chromebooks. This doesn't allow them to access any other like web screens. Um, well, every time you click out of here, it turns off the importing, so make sure you be careful there. Um, I never remember how many points it's worth. You can change that later. If you're modifying for students, like if you have a team talk class like me, you would check and uncheck the students who get this version of the quiz. Uh, due date's always important. And you can put it in the topic or you can move it later like I did with the quizzes. So, we've attached a few things. These are very typical. Um, I have a few more things that we're gonna be attaching um, to this particular week. I'm gonna pause the video while I go ahead and finish this up. So I'm back and I've added everything I needed for week one and a little bonus uh, week two assignment. So it's not actually assignment, but materials. And within there we have the next lesson. Um, a lot of feedback came from the children during our remote learning period in the spring. And some children were just really, really bored at home. They found themselves to be very good at pacing themselves through work and always wanted to kind of work ahead and what was next. So. I wanted to always make sure that the kid who was in a position to work ahead had the opportunity to. Um, so that was feedback from the children. So go ahead and post a little something for the next week. That's my suggestion. So a couple of pieces of advice. Number one, everything should be saved in your Google Drive. And if you've recently accessed it, great. It'll show up easily when you go to attach it. Um, otherwise, it you can place it into a single folder um, I think I call, I made a folder called like about to use or in progress and everything that I needed for the next week as I created it, I just kind of dumped a copy of it into that folder. Uh, everything should be saved as a PDF. You'll notice that here. Everything's a PDF with the exception of the YouTube video. That's for the children. Um, things should be in a logical order. However, if you watch my other video on how to then link your hyperdoc to your classroom, it doesn't really matter because the children won't be navigating this site at all. It'll just take them directly to the right spot. Due dates are very important for organization for them and also notifications for you. If a child turns in something past the due date, you get a notification telling you so. 
trust me, it gets a little overwhelming if you know you got that kid who always takes those extra three days to turn things in. Um, yeah, and there you go. That's week one all set up for you. I know it felt like a lot of work. It does eventually streamline. And the idea here is teamwork makes the dream work. If you are teaching a class with a buddy or two or three, split up the tasks. You know, put someone in charge of making a pretty worksheet, put someone in charge of finding the greatest quizzes there ever is to be found, and put someone else in charge of making a Google Forms quiz for the week. And then share it with each other. These are very, very shareable things. So split the work up and um, if you have any questions, you know, contact me, let me know if you're from my school. Otherwise, go find someone smarter on the internet and watch their video. All right, good luck.